What's up, everybody? Welcome to day 237, making Songbringer. Today I'm going to be making some more input buttons. Yesterday's results were awesome. Um, actually, it was very surprising. I didn't think that I would like diagonal movement in the game, but man, so you can see I'm using an Xbox controller, the actual analog stick. It is really smooth and awesome to be able to move in all eight directions rather than four. You can even throw your top hat in diagonal directions, and that's just awesome, too. So, following up on these really basic things, right, this is all thanks to people providing, you know, their feedback and stuff on the alpha version, right? This is a common thing people mentioned was, hey, no diagonal movement, wish there was diagonal movement. So, this is just a response to that, and what, so, once again, thank you to all the people that have played the game and to, you know, continue to provide feedback and on the game and stuff. I think that the... I'm wondering if the actual... the grass gets all trampled correctly in the diagonal movements. I don't know. I'm not sure it is. Oh yeah, it kind of is. Is it? Huh. Anyways, so today's goal is to take the, um, right now there's only two buttons. There's the A and the B. Um, so the goal is to get at least a C and a D button today. I might perhaps do the L and R as well for some special type things. Maybe like, you know, um, quick map access or something like that. So that's today's goal. Yo, ciao, bello. What up? Pita, Marza, what's Zio mean? Ciao, Zio. Yeah, so let's just do it. Let's dive right in. Start adding some more buttons. So instead of... Oh, he's got to be sequential. Right. C, D. We're calling these X and Y, though. X, Y. What up, our games? Canada's amazing. Yo. Oh. Oh. Let's get the L and R as well. L, R. All right, let's start this compiling. And I want to check if KNUM buttons gets modified, if anything important is really going to change there. Set all buttons down. Correct, that's gonna be good. Clear release buttons, good. Wait, I'm so curious. Uncle! <laughs> nice. Uh, Oh no, what? It's been broken. It's all cool. It's all cool. <laughs> right, has bindings. Okay, this is going to force the game to to rebind keys. That's that's all right. Oh yeah. Is that what you say? What's up, Bungle? Spanish has something like that too, right? Yeah, Zio's are friends. Cool. Hey, now I know how to be cool, and if I ever go to Italy, be like, ciao, Zio. If I'm even saying it right. It's like, yo, bro, right? That's definitely an American thing. If anybody's coming to America, that's the way to be cool on the West Coast. Yo, bro. Probably already know that, though. You got so many movies. Set button down. Yeah, okay, that keeps it within bounds. Event handler keeps a list of touch IDs for a number of buttons. That works. <laughs> Bella Zio! Bella Zio is even better. What's Bella mean again? <laughs> English. 
English detected. That's not an English word. Is it? Oh. Nice. Bela and Belo. Those both mean nice. It's clearly nonsense, right? Much of language is. That's gonna be okay. Should be fine. Touch ended. Oh, by the way, I played with the um, Open Broadcasters settings today for the mic. So hopefully my voice is in sync. I've hated that, uh, how the voice is always out of sync, but I think I might have got it to kind of work. Aha. Uh -huh. Yeah, I was going to wonder. Bellow. But Bella is used much more generic and slang way. Ah. Uh. Yeah. Hey, what well, Canada's amazing. What's up, man? What up, Jayliss? <clears throat> hey, how did that 24-hour stream turn out last night? I watched a little bit of it. It was great. And I, I, f I forgot I was already following that guy. Uh-huh, right. Bella. Uh, it means nothing, literally. He died. <laughs> uh, he was kind of looking tired when I saw him. Yes. Bella Zio. All right. Cool. This looks good. Um, it's going to probably ask me to bind these keys, but it's not going to know what it's going to do. Oh, we need to, we do need to bind some keys though. He made it. Nice. Bella Storia. Nice. Learning, learning. Uh, okay. So... Let's run the game and get some bindings for these new keys. We need to bind up the X, the Y, the L, the R, but I don't know if it's going to let me bind them. So let's see what, what happens. Okay, cool. All the buttons are still working, the existing one. Oh, except for start and select. Ah, which are bound to the old keys. Okay. So we're going to need to kind of rebind everything here. Oh, unless, oh, uh, actually, you know what? I'm gonna do that. I'm gonna change it. Instead of doing it this way, I'm gonna keep select and start the way they were. Oh, should I? K button A, K button B. Yeah, definitely. Everything is nice in Italy. Bella. What up, Akuma? I'm debating whether I should put select and start the way they were, like right there, or leave them like this, because I th actually I think this is the more correct way to do it, because A, B, X, and Y are all kind of, I think these might need to be se sequential, so let's, let's look for K button A. And yeah, there are a few places where this is, that's not used in a sequential manner though. Today of the big rewrite. I don't know. I'm just gonna stick with uh, small, simple, tiny rewrites. Oh, you're oh you're doing a big rewrite tomorrow. Oh, right on. Oh, 21st of October. Does that mean it's the start of like Oktoberfest or something? Oh, dang. Sweet. <laughs> we can go ahead and fill in these, though. X. Opposite of X is going to be Y. Opposite of Y is going to be X. 
Same thing with L and R. I'm kind of debating on whether L and R should be used in the game. Because, I, you know, the original, per I really, I don't like games where you get too many buttons going on, especially at first. It's confusing. It's complicated. I want things to be simple. So I can see X and Y, yeah, that's, that's like, that's pretty important to have those, especially in today's games. You need at least like four buttons if you, if you want to use items a lot, you know. But L and R, I'm not so sure if the, those are necessary. There you go. Where is this bit where it kind of keeps button A? Oh, here it is. Yeah, yeah. Okay, so we did need to keep those sequential. K button A, B, X, Y, all need to be in a row for this to work. Oh, and K num of equipables. This is going to be... We need X and Y in here. K, X, K, Y. And we're going to need to search for K num equipables. Make sure we didn't break anything there. And then this, oh, oh, wait, what, oh, okay, button A plus, yeah, so let's do a button index here, just to make sure, sorry, I'm not checking the chat really quick, just trying to focus and get this a little bit written, button index, and here, this should be button index too. Yeah, button index, yep, yep, okay, and then, yeah, we need to check, yeah, yeah, that's fine, oh, what's this, oh, show controller menu, this is going to need, we're going to need to edit that, and, but first, before we do that, K, num, equipables, that needs to be checked, K, num, equip, oh, Marza, see you, man, sorry. <laughs> All right, cool. So now we have four equipables. This input component is going to have four different repeat counts, repeat maxes. It's also going to loop over four things when it tries to do its buttons. I don't think I've ever initialized an input component and passed in anything other than zero for repeat A and repeat B. This might be a good candidate for removing that from the design. <laughs> right? Yeah, j -list, right on. Good attitude, man. Learning to me is a very nice game. Oh, but I do have to check all this before I do something else. Oh yeah, those are fine. Wait, K input allow four. The default should be eight now. Um. Yep, that's good. Set timers. 
it's fine. Set timer. That looks cool. Let's make sure that these are right. Yeah. We got KNOM equipable timers, repeat counterfeit, those are good. Same thing with the gear component. We have equip and ready. Both those are KNOM equipables. That's good. Gear component. All right, yeah, your equipables, you're ready. That's good. Constants, yeah. Game not CPP load selections. Oh, this is where we load the actual selection for which you had for. Ah, but we need to change this here. This is a pretty important one right here. Oh, I guess I could leave that as C D. Nah, we'll make it X Y. All right, so if I is greater than K B, we're gonna use X as the base, otherwise we're using A as the base. There. So that should save them correctly. Oh, same thing here. Okay, now that we're doing this twice, we need a, we need a better function. So let's do a tiny function for that. Is it equipable two P's? I don't know. Ah. I don't know, I did one P last time. Get equipable car. Oh, uh, yeah, it's a good thing I wrote a function for this because I need to subtract two if it's greater than. Yeah, so we just do a totally different. Life is a game and there are cheat codes. But they have consequences. Very wise, very wise, my friend. There we go, so we got A, B, X, or Y. That worked. I just gotta use it. What up, Bez? Item plus get equip bib equip. Come on, auto complete. You can do it. Yeah, you did it. You did it. Woo, good for you. Boogie, what's up, man? Nice sloth. Oh, wait, where'd it go? Where'd it go? There it is. Item. Get a quibble car, I, good. That should be right. <laughs> that should be right. Famous last words. 
Okay. So we'll set a breakpoint here just to make sure it works. So I'm not assuming that it's going to work right. I'm testing if it does work right. Right? Pretty smart of me, huh? 20 years of programming taught me something. Okay, I think we're good. Let's see if this works. We should be able to bind more keys now. Um, wait a minute. Now we are going to need more buttons and stuff on the one diagram and all that to bind the keys. I don't know if this is going to work. Let's try it though. Let's see what happens. We'll not skip the menu so we can, for, it'll force us to rebind some keys. Get my Xbox controller out. Ready to go! It did not ask me to bind more keys. Yeah, it's not like in the select and the start here. Huh. Oh yeah, it's all messed up now. Something happened. Broke it! You, you blew it! You got irradiated today? You been playing StarCraft? Wisdom must be my mutation. <laughs> nice, man. What up, Felix? Lighter Thief? Welcome, guys. I'm working on adding more buttons. So you'll be able to have not only the A and the B, but you'll have X and Y now, and possibly L and R. I'm kind of on the fence whether L and R should be part of it. The purpose of using L and R would be that you would have... You'd be able to bind... Um, Items to A, like B, X, and Y. So you got three different items. And then L and R would possibly like swap you to, to a different item set. So you could have three more bindings on a couple more things or something. I don't know though. I think I might just do three bindings as it is and have no L and R. All right, so it definitely broke when I started binding the keys. Let's first of all, let's get rid of the existing bindings completely. Even the keyboard. Yeah, even the keyboard. Now, first of all, let's save this back up. Back up these settings. We might need these. This might be something to reference later on today. Uh, bind, so let's, now we can kill all the bindings. And that way it'll force us to bind again. Uh, we need to draw some stuff. Let's, go, let's get this, um, this image up of the keyboard or the, the gamepad. Mm, where is that? Oh, here it is. Controller, maybe? Yeah, that's it. Oh, so lucky. That was fast. Here's a Nintendo style controller. Let's get a, a background we can view. And it's going to need to be a little bigger now. And we need an X and a Y button. So I'm going to back up this layer. Make some X and Y buttons. It's kind of jammed in there now. I don't know if I like this. <laughs> <laughs> you mean me playing right now or switch this graphic? You mean I should I should hook up my other gamepad or I should start drawing something a little bit more super ne super ness. <clears throat> I kind of prefer this one myself. Oh, just the graphic? Yeah, I don't know. I really kind of, I, I designed this whole game to feel like 
an 8-bit game. So I don't know, I kind of like this one. But um, I'm open. Do you guys have certain reasons why the Super Nintendo controller might be better? I can see why it might be better for the four buttons here. Uh-huh, okay, all right. Well, let's see if we can, we can work it out with the graphics first. Because I think the, the problem is this is not, you know, we need to move things around a little bit. Or maybe, <clears throat> uh-huh, okay. We have the red button? Which one's that? My Super Nintendo controller has a red button, but it's only an A button. Which one are you talking about, red button? Like red button, like like Batman style red button? Yeah, yeah, that's, that's a good thing. Maybe try the diamond shape. Yeah, because it's going to look weird like this for sure. I mean, first of all, let me get my graphics tablet out so you can start doing this proper style. We've got a complete backup of the original, so there's no worries about the D-pad doesn't seem centered anymore. Hmm. Well, this is the this is because this is actually the way that was designed, the old Super Super controller. I kind of like this idea of going with a mix of the two controllers. So let's try it out. Yeah, button smaller for sure. Yes. Yeah. Okay. That's why I meant. That's why I meant by Batman button. I got you, the red button. Okay, first thing, I'm gonna make the buttons actually smaller, but I'm actually gonna, I think I'm gonna make them inverse. No, maybe not. Yeah, okay. Cool, yeah. I like the old Super Nintendo look too, or look, right? Yeah, one pixel is kind of nice, huh? This might be a little bit too tight with the two pixels off. Yeah. Okay, and also arrange them in a diet and like a diamond shape. One pixel off the white square and a pixel of the gray square. Oh, worth a try? The B? What's up, Ziri? Yeah, it does. I'll work on that. Yeah, right? It's very clean. 
Very simple, right? Just two buttons, a D-pad. Select and start. Select and start even are kind of overkill almost. Hmm. Change him to, to Jib characters. Oh, that should be pretty cool. Done. Yeah, let's try that. Good call. Get rid of this A, B, anyways. You don't need those. Hmm. Placement. So delicate. One little pixel here and there makes a big difference. Do these even need characters next to them? We don't really even know, need to know this is the A or that's the B or whatever. Because it says it on the when you actually bind the keys. Yeah. Yeah, you're right. They are grouped. And you got this whole this nice little diagonal going on too with the X and the Y. Yeah, 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 Peta. That's what uh, um, Boogie was just saying. Yeah, they probably are still. Still playing with it, you know. Look at this, right? Maybe it, maybe it is best to actually go and use a Super Nintendo as a as a design starting point for all this. This is kind of looking weird, right? Weird. Weird. <laughs> Twitch. Okay, let's do it. SNES.
Man, it's hard to find one perfectly straight on that's real. I think that's close, though, sort of. Right? Yeah. That's what I was intending to do right at first, instead of going with the diagonal line. All, all these avenues, though, are worth exploring, I, I think. So we'll try them both ways, diagonal and straight. Yeah. Uh-huh. Yeah. OK, let's try it this way first. You got to think about where your thumbs would actually be on this thing, too. That's why the D-pad is so low. Yeah. So let's let's break with from reality a little bit though and center the this D-pad a little bit. I know this is not actually design right for your thumbs, but it does kind of provide a little more balance to this. Across in the middle. And it's going to need some kind of at least indicator that's going to have an L up there. So let's make the this image a little bigger. Wrong layer. Is that big enough? No. The L is like almost this is like bigger than a D-pad even. Somehow it looks a little too big though on this SNES or the net old school one. That's good. <clears throat> OK. 
couldn't update content still encrypted. That's so weird. How, did you try um, just completely deleting it and then try reinstalling it? It sounds like a Steam error. Right? So you, you never were able to actually... Were you actually able to download it fully and try playing it? Or was it just still like a... I mean, like, it sounds like an install error to me, but I don't know. It's good. Let's try this out in the game. Oh, that's what's why those were kind of weird. Got some issues here. I guess we can put some button text to... Oh, you played it before? And then it, oh, you played it before and then it tried to update and gave you some content encrypted errors? Ah, uh, well, when you delete the game from, from Steam, it should keep your save file. So you should be okay if you just delete it, uninstall it, and then install it again. You'll still have your save file. Alright, let's experiment with some letters to see if that uh, looks right. <clears throat> Get A, B, X, Y. Put the A on the right. It's always been that way with Nintendo. I don't know about this. It's kind of looking too busy. But we'll see. Let's put them all in there first. B is going to be the next letter. X. So these two. This is line one or zero one. <laughs> As a programmer, I can only start counting from zero. Zero, one, two, three, four. Zero, one, two, three, four. Oh, we got this. This is a weird character right here. And this is the X. Now, I wonder if they were... No, it doesn't help to make them less transparent. I guess I could draw them smaller. That would probably help. You like it? I don't know if I like it. It's kind of it's kind of too busy, but I'm trying to make it a little less busy here. Make them depth with just the sides. What you mean by that, Jaylis? Hey, Greenberry, what's up, man? So far it has been. 
basically there's some bug in El Capitan where if I if I go to if I go to um Safari too much if I open too many Safari windows, it suddenly just kills my whole system. El Capitan shouldn't have upgraded. I should have waited until El Capitan was a little more mature. Right? Yeah, but what you mean? I'm not quite sure what you're talking about. Make them depth with just the sides. I, I don't know what you mean, man. Help me out. Help me out. Yeah, right. Totally debating. Debating. I'm not sure if these are the right... Well, I guess if we took away this shine, it might help. It would be less busy here. Like I did on the cross? Oh, you mean on the D-pad? Make them depth with just the sides? Oh, oh, okay, oh, I get you. I get you now, I understand, I understand. You mean that they'd be like etched, like indented, I get it. Okay, well I could do that. Um, it would kind of be, it looks like the light's coming from the upper right-ish. So I could do like just like the lower left depth of them all. Bot, see ya, ban. Ban. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay, let's try that. And also, it might be better to not have this shine, so. Okay, so let's try this layer uh, with some depth. I guess we can keep the shine for a minute. Hmm. It's tricky to try and do, pull that off with so few pixels. Unless I just botched the job, I'm not sure. Hmm. Yeah, that does look too clean now. Let's try it one more time. Let's try doing a little, a few less pixels off. Hmm. Oh. Maybe. But these are supposed to be out dented or standing up. So. Hmm.
kind of like this is the best so far. Just a few pixels. All right, but that oh yeah, I get what you mean. So they're they're standing up, but then they do have these little indentations. I don't know. You know what? That's, I don't want to. I don't want to spend too much time. Too much more time on this. I'm just gonna try it, and if it doesn't work, why didn't that work? Oh. If this doesn't work, I'll just. I'm not even gonna have the letters on there. They don't necessarily need to be there. It's a cool idea, but maybe not necessary. So, um, so yeah, they, I think they look just as good without. In fact, they probably look better without. And we'll try it with, with them first though. So everything changes when you see it in the game. So perhaps it looks a little different when it's in there. Right, let's do this. This goes in uh, Sheets, HUD maybe, Controller, nope. Yeah, you think without? Yeah. I'm going to try it with first, and then it'll probably end up doing without. Oh, I'm finally using Z Shell, by the way, if anybody else is. who I, for, I forget who told me to start using Z Shell, but I definitely think it's freaking awesome. Oh, Rashid's title. Yeah, it works good. Awesome. I think it was a glitch there with Steam or something. Awesome, man. Yeah, there was a minor update where I added some DLLs, so hopefully nobody has that problem where it won't start up anymore. HUD, Sheets, Title. Hey, what's up, PMC? Okay, so now that we've got this exported, we're probably going to need to do a little bit of editing of where these pixels go. I think that's going to be in title scene right here. Yeah, switch controller step. We need more steps. X, Y, L, R, select start. What's that site to test the gamepad? What? What you mean? Oh, is there, is there some site that tests your, your gamepad? What up, Brandon Dyer, by the way? What's up, man? This one's X, this one's Y, this one's L, this one's R. What are these texts? Oh, menu up. Oh yeah, we need some text for these two. Let's hook that up. Strings. Menu A B X Y. L R. Hopefully these are kind of I guess no, these aren't actually. I was thinking this would be kind of a universal thing. Is this a universal thing? If you speak Italian. Is it still L and R, X and Y? Probably not for everything. Yeah, totally right, PMC. It's pretty cool there. So um, yeah, I'm interested to see what they had to say first, but I'll, I'll share the news as well. Oh, really? Oh, that's cool. That's really nice. I don't know that site, but if you'd find it, definitely post a link. That'd be cool to to rely on A, B, X, Y, L, R, 
And then we need to just dial in the positions for them. Right? But it, if you were to write it as just L or just R, would it be S and D then? Links and recs. Hey, what's up, Solar Flare? Welcome, man. I'm working on adding more buttons. So today's, you know, I'm, I'm starting with the basics, right? These are first days back after the alpha version. Um, you know, so now I'm adding X and Y, so you got the more buttons, so you can use more items at once. And I'm also adding L and R right now, but I'm on the fence whether I will actually keep L and R in the game. I think they're kind of a little bit, might be a little too complicated, a little bit too much. I like things simple, but definitely I like the concept of having more buttons for items. Yeah, okay, so it is S and D. Oh. <laughs> What's up, Pedro? <laughs> uh, all right. I think these, these might have all changed since we added a couple pixels to the top. Yeah, yeah, I got gotcha. you. Okay, well, let's see what happens. We got no bindings right now, and we'll start with some new bindings. I, I'm just, I'm wondering if any of this is going to work for the, for the controller art. Oh yeah. Well, retro is just it, retro VGS is is a is a new school system for playing new games on cartridges. It's not really pixel games. It's not necessarily pixel games, but it is kind of retro pixel games that are really going to be on that because that's what they intend. So yeah, retro VGS. Um, their plan was to launch a some sort of crowdfunding campaign and hopefully raise the funds to be able to do this rad new system where you can play games on cartridges again that's really the vision games on cartridges like just like the old school days um, but their their uh, their Indiegogo failed um, I have a lot of thoughts on why it failed but what's great is they didn't give up they actually are gonna do another campaign they're gonna take a lot of feedback they got from all all the people that were like looking at their campaign going oh you know this is what's wrong basically they didn't have enough games they didn't have the right price point for their system a lot of, a lot of other problems so they're going to back up, redo everything. Yeah, they, they did. Yeah, they totally failed. They asked for $2 million, and they really only got 50000 raised. And then they're, they're, and because such a, li a low amount got funded, they just it, they kept going down and down and down and down. So they, one day they're at sixty grand, the next day they're at fifty five, the next day they're at fifty. It was bad. But anyways, they're going to back up and start it all again, and this time they're going to do it on Kickstarter, which is one of the one of the most important parts, right? I don't think Indiegogo is the right platform for that. Latin. Dude, you do speak a lot of languages, man. It's amazing. Okay, so let's see what happens here when we try and bind all these new keys and stuff. Yeah, I definitely do not like those buttons having some text on them. Okay, so yeah, the X... Or the A button needs to go a little farther to the right. X needs to be higher. L needs to be up there. Whoops. Oh. Huh. It's really finicky all of a sudden. Like it jumps many, uh, something's wrong. Hey, what's up, Mighty Nest? Nope, I haven't. It's kind of a different system from what I hear. Different concepts, but yeah. Yeah, agreed, agreed. Kickstarter better. Oh, yeah. Cool, man. Well, thanks for saying hi, stopping by. So let's start with uh, let's start with the actual binding positions of the art. So the X needed to move over like five pixels or so. And 
Oh, no. Wait, did I do that wrong? I did do that wrong. Those are all good. It's the X and the A. So let's do 60. And the, okay, so the X and the Y just need to move up a bit. So let's try 24. No, this is minus. Let's do plus. I don't think it's not going to be that much, though. L and R, these are up in the top left, top right. Yeah, yeah, totally. How did, How is it, man? Was it a good system or something? Yeah, it does look pretty cool. Hopefully, so hopefully they, now that they're kind of back, I, I'm so I really respect that. It's really cool that yeah they failed their first attempt, but they're not giving up. It's really cool. Are you asking if I'm going to PAX in Australia? No, that'd be cool. I don't have the funds to do any any um. What's that? We don't need that semicolon there. Um, I don't have the funds to do any kind of game festivals right now. I'm going to be going to GDC, though, next spring, um, just to the after parties, though, because I live here in the same city. Oh, okay. Oh, so you don't even know. Yeah, I don't know. I haven't played it. I haven't tried it. L and R are going to be... From the center, approximately fifty nine thirty one. Yeah, exactly. That's I'm gonna go to be going to these after parties. So if anybody else is going to GDC this year, let's hook up. Definitely would love to meet some of you guys. Am I doing Ludum Dare? I don't have time for it, but I do respect everyone that's doing it. I think it's a great, great thing. Ludum Dare. Plus plus. Both of these are gonna be like let's do fifty-five and this one's gonna be negative fifty-five. And X is like thirty. L oh no, both of these are positive thirty-ish. Thirty-three is what it seemed like. Okay. Now, that other problem with that binding test there was that it bound something wrong. Something was wrong there for sure. This is the button index. This is the player index. So player zero, first player. Uh, button, that's south. That's north. Yeah. So it did bind everything up. But something definitely weird was happening. It's like it wasn't quite recognizing the bindings right. Oh, how do you say it then? How, is, how am I supposed to say that? <laughs> is there really a proper way to say that? The name is Latin for to give a game. Ludum dare. Ah, Ludum dare. Oh, oh, let's check this out. The guy that actually runs it says it the way I did. Or Ludum dare. Well, so wait, no, I didn't say it right at all. I didn't say either way. I mixed the two. No, I didn't mix. Yeah, I didn't mix the two. Kind of, kind of. <laughs> Close. Ludum dare or ludum dare. Ludum dare. Ludum dare. Hopefully I can get that in my head and start saying that right. Ludum dare. Are you guys doing ludum dare? Ludum Dare Ludum Diarrhea Diarrhea. Uh, uh, uh. 
Oh, you know what? It, it has something to do, I bet, with this controller step. Controller step plus plus, controller step blah blah blah. Control step is greater than zero. Greater than number of buttons. That's okay. That's fine. Okay, let's do this again. Let's rebind again and see what happens with the, at least with the art. Oh, and also the image didn't like these button images anymore. Let's get let's get those out of there. Yeah, this is great. Mars is not here, so this doesn't officially in Mars's book. This doesn't count if this goes anywhere. What's up, Broba? Okay, so I can at least get the visual part right of this binding thing. Trolls. Hold up. Down. Okay, so both those are a little too far. Yeah, everything needs to move a little bit to the left with the D-pad. Maybe one or two pixels. Oh, that's way off. Oh, L's wrong. Wrong side. Oh, that's so weird. When I bound L. It also bound R for me. It probably has something to do with it. I'll get a clippable car. I guess we can check if this works. Oh no, they're broken for you. Hey, what's up, Super Positive? Thanks for streaming the game the other day, man. So I... I zero, we should be getting a return value of A. Good. I is one, should be getting a return value of B. Good. I is 2, we should get X. Good. I is 3, we should get Y. Good. Yay, assumptions. All the assumptions have passed their tests. Cool, now if I could at least, if I could bind some keys to X and Y, I would have some more items. So let's work on that next after we finish these other two things. Right on. Oh no! Yeah, they've been some of some icons have been broken for me today too. I don't know what it was. Yeah, see, so check this out. See, some of mine are broken. It's Twitch's fault. It's totally Twitch's fault. Okay, so yeah, let's dial in those um positions really quick. Right, like the D-pad was all, I need to go like another, t maybe two pixels. Let's try one pixel at first. Yeah. <laughs> what are you saying con for? So A was good, X was good, but B and Y were, all, were wrong. Oh, and L and R were swapped. So let's do uh, B, X, less, 28 maybe. And that time I had a real big problem with, uh, did it work for you that time? Refresh didn't help. Lord of mercy. What are we gonna do? See, I'm telling you, telling you it's Twitch's fault. 
which is fault. Let's okay. Unbind these keys. Do it again. <laughs> oh, might as well yell gone. <laughs> uh, oh, I get it now. <laughs> Was that from the Rathicon? Oh, good. Only th good thing it did only one pixel there, because any more than one would have been too much. Oh, whoops! I did the wrong way on those. That needs to go the other way. Ah, oh, okay. So it was this Xbox controller binds weird. Oh, now it's all fixed too. Okay. There's some kind of weird binding issue with the the L trigger button on the Xbox, so I gotta look at that. Okay. Yeah. I like Khan in the new one, but that's because I think Ben Benedict Cumberbatch is a cool actor. Thirty-three, thirty-eight, and uh, should I try and fix the bug with them? Um, maybe. No, I'm listening as a bug. Let's put this as a bug. Oh man, I don't like looking at this list. Look at this. Look at this. When I when I was I was down to like eighty bugs. Now I'm at 196. Too many bugs. Um, but I already did try diagonal movement. Uh, so, binding L trigger on Xbox controller Mac. Accidentally binds two buttons at once. Fix that later. All of your emotes broke now? Some server issue, I'm telling you. Benedict Cumberbatch, Benedict Cumberbatch, Benedict Cumberbatch, Benedict Cumberbatch, Benedict Cumberbatch, Benedict Cumberbatch. Yep, it's really hard. Sweet, thanks, PMC. Cool, man. Global Game Jam, right on. It's a new one, right? Is it new? Has this one been around? Okay, we can try one more time. I'm just dialing in the visuals of binding these new keys. And then I'll go and add the keys to the menu and start adding it to the... So you can actually bind them while you're in the game and then we'll use them. So that's the goal for today. Just having the X and Y button so you have three items you can use at once. What? Three items? Might be too many. That needs to go down and right a pixel. That needs to go down and right a pixel as well. That needs to go... It could go down and right. 
that can go down like three or four pixels. Okay. Ah, more bots. What the butt? What the bot? Now you've summoned Benedict. <laughs> That'd be so awesome if it were true. Benedict Cumberbatch is just here drinking tea. Oh. Oh, he has been around. Okay. Yeah, we're going to do Squirrel Game, man. Are you going to do that for your Game Jam thing or something? Or is this a real pro game? Mighty Nest, um, actually, I think I'm gonna. This is gonna be a permanent part of the game. Let me show you. It actually is really cool. Um, skip the menu so we don't have to. But yeah, the diagonal movement is really neat. The only reason I was kind of like on the fence about it was that I really wanted it to be like an 8-bit game, right? But I realized that 8-bit games had that possibility of having diagonal movement as well, even though a lot of them didn't implement it. But diagonal movement super sweet. You can actually throw your top hat. Diagonally now, that's pretty cool too. You can attack diagonally, even though you're not really seeing that it is. The hitbox has actually gone a little bit diagonal, so you've got a little bit more control over where you're swinging, where you're throwing the hat. Oops. It's actually really neat. And it makes the whole game feel a lot smoother too. You can like walk in a sine wave if you want. It's especially nice with an analog stick controller. But it also works with other with like regular D pads and stuff too. So yeah, I think this is gonna be a permanent change. If to go backwards at this point and to undo that change would make me feel sad. So obviously there's something to that, which is nice. Pop, 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 pop. Oh wow. Yeah, yeah, right on. Yeah, it's definitely one of those nice, it's a nice thing. Definitely not taking that out. And so, yeah, I'm. this is like the second day back working on the game after the alpha version. So I'm just working on the very, very basic things like diagonal movement and having three buttons instead of one for using items. It's little things like that. Yeah, I don't know. I don't know if an option would be the right way to go about it though. I don't, you know, if the game is meant to be that way, then why would you have the option? Because if essentially with this diagonal movement, it's also affects the enemies. Enemies can move diagonally now too, even though they could before in the past, but still it would kind of be unfair almost to be able to add that option and have people play that way. I mean, I guess it's an option, so it's not really a matter of fairness. It's just a matter of design. I don't know. Yeah, yeah, yeah. All right, Peter. Good night, man. Good night, thief. See ya, see ya. Yeah. So I think I think if I do do it, it's going to be a permanent thing and no option. Unless, you know, it is something where some people are really craving it. You know, if people really are like, dude, I miss, I miss the old nod diagonal movement, then sure, maybe I'll add an option, but I doubt that people are going to want that. Yeah, yeah. I did feel bad about it at first, but it really, I was just being stubborn. So I've let go of it. I'm on to this awesome new diag it's diagonal. I'm definitely sold on the idea. Now that I've played it like this, it's, it's worth it. It's really cool. Yeah, oh, permadeath is only four directions? Maybe. And you can only use one button instead of three or whatever. So A, one more pixel to the right, one pixel down. One more pixel to the right, one down. This one is one less up L and R both of these need to come down like four pixels so I 
Oh, man. Oh. All right, Mighty Ness, good night, man. Thank you. Yeah, it would be, it would be super old school. Android Studio, oh, man. Yeah, all of Android is just kind of, right? All right, this should be the last time binding the keys for now. And now we can move on to the other part. I have not played it yet. Is this super cool? Do I have to add it to my list? Wait. This looks awesome. I'm definitely adding this to my list. Oh, they're early access. We have a demo. I'll get a demo. I'll play it tonight. I've been playing a lot of games, actually. I'm finally playing games again. Normally, I don't play many games when I'm um, making games, but I've found time lately. Invalid platform. Must be only Windows, eh? Oh well, I'll get it on Windows tonight or something. Yeah. Nice. Yeah, that's pretty cool, right? I like that too. That little mountain parallax looked really good. Good job. Developers of Secrets of... Is it Grindia? Or is it Grindia? It's probably not Grindia, huh? Yeah, I will. Cool. I definitely will. I can't I can't really play but games without a controller these days. Alright, it's it's not as fun keyboard makes me feel like I'm working you know I don't want to work while I'm playing a game yeah see it did that bug where it bound two keys at once because I did the wrong trigger button that's a bug I need to work on for sure Kind of important. Don't want anybody else to have to deal with that. But it's on my list. I'll get to it eventually. Yep, I think these are good enough. All these little green, green, where these little green um, circles are being placed, they look good. Now. Oh, no, no. Oh, damn it. Did it again. That L trigger is like, it's my downfall. Yeah, you played it? Nice. Uh-huh. Cool. Yeah, it's on my list already. Yeah, I definitely, definitely would love to play that one. Looks awesome. Highest on my list, though, is Axiom Verge. I really cannot wait to play Axiom Verge. <laughs> I do. I do. I don't like to, I don't like to look at this list of bugs, but, and I, I'm also going to make this public somehow. I don't know how I'm going to do that yet, but it's either going to be like a GitHub forum or something where you guys could kind of comment all online and stuff and share bugs and stuff that way. What's up, Barkor? So yeah, so many ways to break stuff. <laughs> yeah, Axiom Verge for sure. Yeah. Mad respect for Axiom Verge. Very stoked to play it. I, I should just, I should just pa pay the cash and get it right now. It looks so awesome. No Man's Sky, yeah, cool. Yeah, No Man's Sky looks rad for sure. Uh huh. 
Google Docs might be a possibility, yes. I should consider that more heavily. I kind of like the idea of having a GitHub um, project where, because that way you guys can like actually open up an issue and other people can comment on that issue and I can put those as part of milestones. It's actually GitHub actually kind of is, has a lot of the solutions that we would we would need as a community to kind of like log these ideas and bugs. But there's also there's also like you know track we could use track. Yeah, that's a possibility. But really, I would just I would just create a a GitHub for just the like just text files. Like all it would have is these you know some ideas and also the uh, the strings, so people can more easily um, you know uh, translate. And also, it will have sort of a modding document. So like a document about here's how you would mod the game. Here's all the text files you could change and stuff. Yeah, it might be. Yes, I think I have seen Chasm. Yeah, yeah, see, I've been to this site. Yeah. But did I, I think I already added it to my, um, to my wish list, but I'm not sure. I like other video just jumped right into it. Oh, it's only 24 seconds long. Coming 2015. Oh, same. Yeah, let me add that too. Ah, uh, why? Why is this? Why is this? What? What is it about the them that's kind of irking you? Cool. Cuphead. What's that one? Oh, it's just side scrollers in general? Uh. This one's not on Steam or? Don't deal with the devil. Run gun game. Ooh, they had an E3 trailer. Sounds like they have a Powerful team of marketers. Awesome. I love this old, this old like original Mickey Mouse type style art. Okay, but I want to see the game. Whoa. I like it. I like this almost psychedelic art here. It's like not quite psychedelic, but almost. Very unique. I like it. Yeah, I hear you. There are a lot of them, right? A lot of side scrollers these days. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, nice. It is kind of trippy, right? I like trippy games. I just played, um, if anybody hasn't played uh, Kentucky Route Zero, Kentucky Route Zero is awesome. And also Nidhogg. I've started, I finally played Nidhogg. And I'm like, dude, Nidhogg is awesome. I can't wait to play Nidhogg with some friends. Yeah. Where were we at? What was I doing? I was just, I got these keys bound, right? Did I do it right? No, I think I, bro I messed up. Let me, let me bind this one last time and then we can actually put it in the game and start using these three new buttons. Four new buttons? Yeah, four new buttons. Don't press the wrong L. Done. Cool. Cool, we're good. All right, good. Now, um, so what I'm gonna do next is add 
an X and a Y down to the bottom part of the HUD there, down here. So you can see what what buttons you you have a your keys you got bound down there, and then also we'll add something in here so you can actually set a binding for your B. So you'll actually probably pre you'll press the B button to set your B binding here instead of leaving the screen. You'll actually press B or X or Y to set your binding for those particular items or whatever. So that's the next thing on the list here. Yeah, nice. All right, yeah, I know. Good job, man. You did it in C++? On Windows or on Mac? Yeah. Yeah, yeah, man. Arigato. Okay, well, yeah, next up, let's get the, um, the HUD. So it's got... Uh, Where's that image sprites HUD? Yeah. Ah, oh cool. Uh-huh. Oh on Linux, sweet man. <laughs> All right. Yeah. Good job, dude. Good job. Allegro 5, dude, that Allegro's been around for a while. It's been around since the 90s, right? Good, good, man. Smart. Way to go, dude. C++. Uh, I think it's I think it's a great language to learn. I would recommend it to anyone else out there. You want to learn programming, you want to learn how to make games. C++ is a good place to start, I believe. In fact, I would start with C first and then do C++. But um it's not for your t it's not for your absolute beginner though. Absolute beginners might be a bad place to start. It's a little bit too complicated. Pointers and all that are a little bit sort of intermediate to advanced kind of concepts. Gear grid. Where the hell is this B and A buttons? Too many layers. It's way too many layers. Okay, it's not there. Oh, it's in here. Hot text. Ah, there it is. Yeah, <laughs> right. Yeah. Yeah, but you'll need it. You'll need it if even if you do cross-platform development, you're still going to need Visual Studio. So it's a good thing you already installed it. Nice. Yeah, you feel free? Right on. Yeah. Get free, man. Take your shirt off. Swing it over your head. Woo! Hi. What's up, Rocket Bunny? All right, so you know what? Another thing I'm going to do to this is I'm going to take this B and this A. I'm going to take it out of this and then put it in based on what letter you actually, because these are totally different letters on different, with different languages. So B is not necessarily B, could be something else. So is X and Y, I think, right? Yeah, yeah, they're different. They're different on different languages. You're already naked, nice man. <laughs> A little bit too free. <laughs> All right, Jay Liz, good night, man. We got 10 pixels here, 12 pixels. And we got 10, and this should also be 10. Good. Got some, we're aligned now. 
Okay, so yeah, I need to delete all these X's and Y's and stuff. Yes. Yep. A good way to do a cross-platform, if you're going to be using OpenGL, check out GLFW. Yeah, Rocket Bunny, I got one for you. Let me show you. Here's where I, I kind of got the ideas for doing a procedurally generated uh, maps from MetaZelda. I didn't, I didn't use his algorithms or anything. I changed it up a lot. But this taught me a lot about his way he would do these. But here you go. Here's a good, great um, articles, Rocket Bunny. What's up, baby? Awesome. Why did the Java programmer have trouble seeing? <laughs> yeah, yeah. Nice. Yeah, yeah. Tom Coxon. Yeah, his game is uh, Lena's Inception. Great game. I bought it. It's like it's only six bucks or something like that to get it. Yeah, this is definitely a great algorithm. Yeah, check it out, Rocket Bunny. Lots of articles in there. You can learn a lot about how to do procedurally generated maps. Not only that, not only dungeons, but overworlds as well. Yeah. Nice, right on, Zanger. How did it go? Hopefully. Yeah, you got to find out. You got to find out. Hopefully they had a good sense of humor. I bet you that if they're grading those kind of things, I'm sure they had, they sure they understood that you were making a joke there. Hopefully. Yeah, let's, let's just delete all these. We don't need these. Let's cut them into a new layer and then... Okay, there, we've got four little slots for buttons now, and I'm going to fill in the actual letters using uh, localized strings now instead of, you know, preset English letters. So that'll be good. Let's save this out. Nice, right on. Oh, yeah, OpenGL. Yeah, it is, it is kind of funny. It's very C. But uh, if you're doing, are you? What are you? Are you what are you learning to do? You learn to make games and stuff. What do you want to do with your C plus plus skills? Do I have any tips for a beginner in Java? Sorry, I don't know Java. But if anybody else is on here, yeah. Actually, I do. Maybe have one tip. I got a. There's this one language or one book called Learn Code the Hard Way. I think they have a Java. Nope, they don't. Sorry, never mind. I was gonna say check this out, but it's not Java. Sorry, man. I wish I could help you more there, but I uh, I'm a C C plus plus kind of programmer. Yeah, you're learning. Nice. Any tips for beginners? Yeah, yep, a little friendlier, a little higher level. Oh, ASCII, that's right. Yeah, you don't need OpenGL. Don't even look at GLFW. Nice, dude, I'm so stoked. I love ASCII games. Did you? Did I show you um the one ASCII game? I forget what it was called. We should now have um, four slots, but we won't be able to bind them to items yet. But maybe if I pre-bind them in the settings, we can. Yeah, I'll cook cool. So we got three little slots or four slots down there at the bottom of the screen. 
Okay, so what if I did just manually put them in? Oh, there you go. Yeah, Code Academy. Yeah, check out Code Academy, Rocket Bunny. Code Academy is awesome. Okay, so item B, item X, item Y. So if we had item X, what do, what do we got here? Blink. Item Y. What else? Bombs. We have bombs. No bombs? We need bombs. Mm hmm Oh. Uh, yeah, yeah, truly. Yeah. Yeah, right, right. Yeah. It's funny. Java. Oh, you mean JavaScript? Nope. Don't mean JavaScript. It didn't work. Oh, wait, maybe just because there's no way to show the item. Let's see if the actual button works. No, it doesn't. It does not. There's no way to use the X and Y just yet. And there's no way to visually show it. So let's start with visually showing it. We should have, um, there's this button or button setting type method here in area. Button, so show item, set item. I think it would be called set item. Set item image. Yeah, I think that's it. Set item image. Yeah, that's it. <laughs> right. <laughs> So yeah, we just gotta get set item image so it's smart enough to do the other two types. You want it? Thanks. You're welcome. Don't set it up there and spill it. Oh, good. Thank you for reminding me. All right, yeah, and now we need a different slot. So we need HUD item X and Y. Oops. A little bit. <laughs> CMake, yeah, I've used it for like a. I'm not really an, a CMake expert, so I don't. I shouldn't really say yes, but I have. I have used it a little bit. What, you got any questions? You're trying. You're trying to set it up or use it. Set it up for your project. Here we go. Let's get item A or X and Y set up. Very similar. Feels wrong to duplicate all this code again. What oil? Pixel, pixel. Yep. Position. This is gonna be. This one's two three twenty three. This one's two ninety three. That's thirty pixels. So this one's gonna be two sixty three. And we're all good. Cool. Let's see the next one. Item Y. Let's 
Yeah. C make is a lot more involved. Like it goes in it. Um, uh, you know, you know, the old school dot configure. It's kind of like dot configure where it actually goes in it. Um, uh, like it goes and determines what kind of processor you're compiling with. And, uh, you know, it sets all these kind of flags and stuff. What's up, bot? You're my enemy. Banhammer, bot! <laughs> Did you say hello to the bot? <laughs> yeah, yeah. It's a lot like dot configure. So make is kind of like more just basic. It's just kind of like runs a few different lines of script. And then CMake does a whole crap load of things to test out. <laughs> Basically, it's a lot it's a lot like that, yeah. Yeah. So this one's gonna be two thirty three. Good. That should be set up. Let's see what else we need to check and t uh, change. Kind of lame, but we should do this here too. This is a bad way to code right here. Bad. I don't like this design of this right here, but it's not that important, so. X, Y. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, yeah, Python. I, I definitely recommend learning Python for beginners. Awesome, awesome language to know. Zero to Hero with Python? Cool. I like the name. Let's see the next one. Damn it. This is, this is getting bad. Let's turn this into a function. <laughs> uh, can you make 2D games? Yep, it can. But you're basically you're essentially doing 3D the whole time, and you're not really you're just kind of ignoring one dimension. Mm. What's up, King? Nothing. Here's another one. Is item sprite child. Oh, this is a not. This is not an item sprite. Yeah, I think I did I break some, I'm just checking if I broke something here. Right there. If child is, yeah, okay, that's right. Cool. Yeah. 
Good resource. Don't confuse this. This isn't this isn't Java with with Unity. This is JavaScript, but it's not even JavaScript. So Rocket Bunny, do not do not ever use Unity's JavaScript. Problem with uh, Unity's JavaScript is it's not actually JavaScript. It's actually Unity script. It's a very poor name. Um, so they it will teach you bad habits in in regards to JavaScript if you think that Unity's JavaScript is actually JavaScript. Yeah, you just if you're gonna use Unity, only use C sharp. Oh, seriously? Right? Yeah, it's based on JavaScript, but it's not, it's definitely not the thing you want to ever learn because it's, it's just, it's just not JavaScript. And sec so it'll teach you bad habits if you think that is JavaScript. And secondly, C Sharp is way better. So use C Sharp. Right, good, we got these working. Oh, let's see if this method is gonna work. You can wanna get item sprite frame and frame.size sprite.set. Yeah, that'll be fine. All right. Good, this is, looks like it's all done. Let's see if we can got the two more items now in the game. And then we'll just figure out how to use them and then we'll figure out how to bind them Mm-hmm. Yeah, you can't exactly you can't use it elsewhere. Yeah. All right, do we got the oh we don't got them, damn. No oh because they're probably not being set. Yeah. Yeah, that's what I try to do. Exactly. Worthless knowledge. Unityscript. They should just, seriously, they should delete Unityscript. They should not even have it anymore. But I guess they probably have some people that wrote some games with it, so they have to keep it. Thanks, man. Nice, right on. Yeah, that's. I think that's going to be more and more of a thing, right, in school. Yeah, you're welcome, man. Teaching kids how to program. There's a lot of cool um, apps out there that t help you teach how to, you how to code, like sort of more visually, like placing blocks together and and stuff. I, f I forget what what the apps were called, but there's it seemed pretty neat. Okay, did it save the binding? Looks like we still have a bind of x, yeah, x and y. So let's see how game is loading them. Oh, here it is, load selections. Mm-hmm. Yeah, HTML5, sure. Yeah, that's a good first step. HTML is really nice for people to learn because it's like such a simple language format that pretty much anyone can kind of understand. So this does loop over all the equipables. It gets the item. Ah, this is the problem. Yeah, I think that was it right there. Yeah, good question. <laughs> uh, 
Nice. Nice. Scratch, is that the app? Is that what it's called? Is it called, what's it called, Scratch? Scratch coding, not scratch coding, scratch here. Yeah, so I've been here before, right? Dance party. Yeah. It's the best dance party ever. Let's see inside. What does this look like? Yeah, see, you know, this is what I'm talking about. Like this whole like visual style, style coding. When this is clicked forever. Next costume, glide, next, yeah, this is cool. It's almost like coding is becoming more and more like this. Maybe one day we will all code visually. Maybe not, I don't know. Have I tried Game Maker? No, I haven't, but I heard it. I've heard great things about it. I recommend it, trying it out for beginners especially. Nice, right on. What's up, Thomas? Yeah, great weekend. How about yourself? Hmm. Oh, cool. And then saving selections too. We also want to make sure it saves. Save, equipped, no equipables. That should work. Okay, let's see. This might actually work now. Hey, what's up, JFK? High five, man. Awesome. Well, today I'm just adding more buttons to the game. So yesterday I had a diagonal movement. Check it out. You can actually move diagonally. Really cool. Very smooth. You can throw your hat top um, diagonally. Uh, now I'm adding more buttons. So there's spots for more buttons right here down on the bottom of the screen on the HUD there. But it's not loading them yet. Let's see what's up with that. Just set a breakpoint where it's uh, loading these, and we'll figure out what's why it's not working. Oh, we're here at the breakpoint already. Key. Oh, I already checked this one. Don't need that. Wait, delete this breakpoint. Yo, what's up, Taco? Yeah, yeah, there's gonna be, so there's, yeah. So right now, the game only has A, B. For A is your sword, B is whatever item you have. It's bound to or whatever. Now there's going to be X and Y, so there's three buttons for using items. So you'll be able to have like your top hat, bombs, and your blink all in one quick access without having to up to get to the menu to change and all that. Hmm. Yeah, this happens to a lot of people. Yep, happens to a lot of people. A lot of people have, you know, they, they think, oh man, it'd be so great to make games. And then they jump into it and they're like, damn, this is hard to make games. So maybe it's just not their thing. But uh, yeah, the people that really, really want to make games, they persist. They learn. It takes years. You know, when you're first starting out, you think, oh, I want us to make games, but... It could take a whole year, I think, to kind of get used to all the little, you know, there's a lot of little things you got to learn when you're making games. How to make art, how to how to make music, how to program, that's a huge thing. How to use whatever software you're using to make the game, that's also a big thing. Oh, wait, wait. This should be not equal to A. Let's try this without the breakpoint real quick. <laughs> I 
<laughs> right? We got, yeah, we got four buttons now. Does it work? Nope, it doesn't work to use them, but at least they're visually there. We got four items down here on the bottom. Awesome. Okay, now let's get them to work. But what if I change? Oh, I can't change them now yet. It's getting nice. Right on, man. Yeah, right? Scope is very important. If anybody's, you, you gotta check this out. Hey, check out extra credits. You know what, I, I got a link to this. This is a really, really great thing. This is something that, ha I think this is a common thing, Zanger, among sort of ambitious people, is where you'll set a goal, you'll be like, man, I really wanna do this game project, and then you realize, uh, you know, a day or two later that you set a very, very big goal. Um, Extra Credits has a really, really nice video series on game development, and one of the one of the first things they teach you is how to scope, how to scope your project realistically. I think this is I think this is it right here. Setting and keeping minimum viable product. Here it is. Here it is. Scope small. Yeah, check this out. Maybe this helps you, Zanger, and anybody else too. Check this out. These are great, great videos. Uh huh. Yeah. What up, Mumir? What would I do today if I were to start over making games? Good question, man. With today's technology and everything. If I were to start over, I would learn Python and Pygame at first. You know, Python and Pygame are so simple. Python's a great language to learn because it's sort of C-based. You learn a lot of the concepts of programming from Python. And then I would probably end up, because I'm such this, I'm the same person, I would probably end up getting to C++ and using an open source engine like Coco Studio X eventually. But I would probably start with a very simple thing like Pygame or Python. I probably, if I were someone else, I would probably do Game Maker, but I don't know. I'm just not really a software for making games kind of guy, so that's probably why I wouldn't use Game Maker. But for some people, Game Maker is a great choice. Rocket Bunny, do I model my level generation off of Binding Isaac or Spelunky? No, definitely not either of those. Um, Binding of Isaac uses randomly arranged rooms. This the, my Songbringer uses a totally different technique of actually generating the in every single tile of the game. Spelunky, I know they do it a different way, but they also do rooms arranged. I've seen the way their their uh, their algorithm works as well. It's also different. This is, this is totally different. But it's kind of similar to how Lena's Inception does it, that link I just shared with you earlier. Yes, yeah, 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 truly. Yeah. Yeah, right. Have I? Nope. Nope. Um, El Capitan has some bug. There's some bug in El Capitan where if, if Safari opens too many links, it just crashes. So I wish I could go back to my to not having El Capitan, but it's it would be really hard to do that at this point. So I'm just gonna wait until they fix it. Hopefully it doesn't crash again again today. Yeah, keep going, man, keep going. <laughs> nice. Do I have any resource recommendations for AI? Not really, I guess I don't. I don't know, I would just, I would do some tutorials, you know, Google something. 
What game uses similar procedural methods? Sort of Lena's Inception. I kind of base some of my my game's creation of uh, stuff off of Lena's Inception in his articles. I just shared some links earlier to Meta Zelda. So let me. But here's the game, Lena's Inception, and also here's his articles. Yeah. So I, I did use this a lot as references, but my actual procedural generation for Songbreaker turned out differently. So, you know, I, I kind of like, I was like, oh, here's how he does dungeons and here's how he does his overworld. But then I ended up, Songbringer kind of became a different game. So, you know, the algorithms grew over time and changed into something totally different. Wow, yeah, that's crazy. Yeah. Lena's Inception, pretty cool game. I bought it. Um, it's fun. It's you know sort of the Game Boy style of Zelda, but totally procedurally generated. His his also is like Songbringer does its procedural generation down to the tile level. Every single screen, is, every single tile on the screen is procedurally generated. And same thing with Lena's Inception. And I'm pretty sure Spelunky and and I know for sure that Binding of Isaac does not do it that way. They use randomly. I know Binding of Isaac uses randomly arranged rooms, so they pre-generate a bunch of rooms and then they just randomly arrange them and select them. Good for you, Hardline. Yeah, don't give up, man. It is always tough to learn these complex things like how to make games. So, the, but the longer you stay with it, and the more projects you've done, and the more tutorials you've done, and the more you're familiar with the software you're using and familiar with the language you're using the mo it'll just get easier man yeah definitely great read he's a cool guy his name's tom coxon he's on twitter very cool guy nice yeah yeah he hand builds all those rooms yeah Okay, so that worked to load, visually load the item. Oh, nice, right on. Oh, yeah? Why is that? What, what, what is it about it that's, that's, uh, it's got you feeling that way? Here's where it uses items. So we want to be able to use all four items. Ah, uh, there's other people doing similar things better. Uh-huh, yeah. Right on. Cool, good for you. It's cool you've identified that, Akuma. Awesome. Mm hmm. Okay, so what's stopping it from using those other two items right here? It's like not allowing me to use let's see if we even get here So we can disable this breakpoint. No, oh, actually, yeah. Disable. So now if I press X, nothing happens. Why? Nothing happens. So it's not even getting to that breakpoint. Wait, that was the, not that one, but this one.
Wow, that's a that's a lot to have done. All right, PMC. What do I use to program? I use a language called C++. I'm using a game engine called Cocos 2DX. And I'm using the software called Xcode, which is an IDE, Integrated Development Environment. How is Xcode different from Java? You mean C++ is different from Java or Rocket Bunny? Yeah, this is a, I'm not sure what you're asking here because these are two different things. This is a software, this is a language. Flex, what's up, man? Um, any reason I chose Mac over Windows? Yes. Yes. Yeah. So take take this all take this advice for what for a grain with a grain of salt. You know what I mean? You know, my opinion is my opinion, but I prefer Macs because I've got a Unix back Unix system, a Unix a much more stable operating system, a much smoother, faster operating system, and I've got Unix. It's just so awesome to have Unix commands. You know, I can do everything I would do in Unix here. Ah, uh, you know what I mean. Oh, how is C++ different from Java? C++ is a little lower level, Java is a little higher level, a little friendlier to use, it does a little more things for you. Think of it like this, C++ is sort of like driving a manual transmission car you know you're driving with a stick shift java is more like driving with an automatic car you know it's a, this is kind of just a loose analogy but that's kind of hopefully that gives you an example right it's more automatic it's more friendly to use but with c plus plus you have a little more manual control over things and it's faster and it's more portable yeah nice Hey, what's up, blood? Ban hammer, party out. Do I like Eclipse? No, <laughs> I don't. <laughs> yeah, yeah, totally. Yeah, true, true, yeah. But this is what I mean. The the underlying operating system is pretty awesome. Yeah. Yeah, true. True. Which is kind of one of its which makes it so complex. Is that you can you can be you can use multi multiple paradigms. Mm-hmm. Uh, okay, what's next? It was okay, so I'm not getting this. Why am I not even getting that breakpoint there? Oh, there's no repeat max. Oh, duh. So all of those should be one by default. Let's wait now we get it. Now we should get this breakpoint. Hmm. What's up, Hi Free, Hi Free? He wants to learn to program, huh? I recommend Python myself. I think it's a great language to start with. Yeah, oh, it worked. Yeah, we got all three items working now. Awesome. Cool. That's freaking awesome. True. This is actually pretty important. Yeah, hi, Free. This is some good advice here. Learn English. That's actually pretty important for programming languages almost. And also Python. Hey, 
Hey, thanks, Hardline. Okay, uh, what's next? We need, um, first let's change that item. Let's use the fire blank instead of the blank. Can I get, you can show what I mean. And then, um, we should put some letters on this. So we need some letters on the screen, you know, so that this is the A, this is the B, this is the X, the Y. Right, we'll put those down there. A lot, it's very similar to the Courage label. Yeah. <laughs> what do you what do you recommend learning from then to start with for a learning a beginner a very beginner programming language? Hmm. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, yeah, GML, I, I highly recommend this for beginners too. Game Maker is a great choice. Java 2, yeah, sorry, man. QBasic. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Nice, good for you, man. You recommend C. Nice, man. I, I would recommend this too, but I wouldn't recommend it for the absolute beginner, especially someone that's starting and they're only 14 years old, because pointers are gonna be something where they're like, what the hell? I don't think I don't think C is gonna be an effective language for a new beginner, but I do think it's the next step. I think C is the second language someone should learn if they're starting from complete scratch. <laughs> what about C++ minus minus? Oh, <laughs> uh, yeah. Yeah, nice. Well, agree to disagree then. I guess you, you don't have to use pointers, but... Yeah, you, yeah, you pretty much gonna have to if you're gonna if you're ever gonna use a string or an array. So yeah, letters, letters, letters. Um, area. Let's get a HUD diamond label, HUD key label, cacti bombs. Where does it do the courage? It just says courage. Oh, where is it at? HUD diamond. Label, cactus, where is it? There's this one thing where it just says, oh, there it is, get localized string, menu health, that's it. Cool, we need to do a couple more of these. Uh-huh. Uh, yeah. Really? Yeah, I agree, I agree. But C Sharp is getting to be one of those, lang and Java, are also very popular with game developers. But C++ is more portable and faster. Nice. Mm-hmm. True, true. It all, yeah, it does depend on what you want to use it for. Right, but... But for the absolute, for a 14 year old who just wants to learn how to make games, I don't think that pro programming might not be the thing that they want to do. Programming might be the th one of the third or fourth things they want to do. What they really want to do at this point is just learn how to make games. So I don't think C is a necessity for people that are making games and are using things like Game Maker and stuff like that. What am I going to be for Halloween? I don't know. Nice, right on, man. Yes, cool. I remember when you're first when you're first learning and stuff. Don't it when you when you hit a wall mentally, right? If you're trying to learn something, when you hit those walls, just remember to relax. You know, if you if you get to this get to a point where you're not excited and you're like, man, that sucks. I'm really stuck right now in my learning to program or learning to make games. 
just relax. You got to learn how to use your subconscious mind to help you. Uh huh. Mm hmm. Hot sprite, font, localized string. This is going to be K menu. Or it's menu A. Where is this going to go? Approximately there. 31121. 21, back to zero. Okay, let's see if that works. We should have the letter A now on the screen. Good. Yeah, good, good. Failure is definitely a step forward. It is. If you learn from it. But you pretty much have to learn from failure to move forward. Good. We've got the A, but it's a little off on its position, so we need to move down and left about five or pix so pixels each. So let's go to 306 and 20, or like 16 or so. Oh, yeah. I hear you on that. Virtual pizza? I want real pizza. I'm hungry. In fact, I kind of am hungry. Wow, I've been streaming for two and a half hours already? Yeah. Well, I did accomplish a lot already. Check it out. We got four items. Four freaking items. Okay, I'll finish this up though. I'll at least get the A, the B, and the X and the Y there listed on the bottom. And then, yeah. So I'm about to close down the stream here. This was about, this is going to be more like 307 and 15. Now these are localized. That's pretty good. And these are all 30 pixels apart from each other. So B is... Wait, wait, A. A is 307. B, wait, no, B is 307. A is, uh, wait, what were they before? Oh, A is on the right. Never mind. Okay, so A is 307, B is 287. No, no. Two seventy-seven. Why is it so hard to figure out right now? Two seventy-seven. Oh, it's hard. Subtraction, man. Subtraction is too hard. <laughs> Not quite, but getting there. So close to a new record. <laughs> Two. <laughs> X. See how those line up? Yeah, Mars is not here. So this is, I'm gonna go ahead and say this officially counts even though the Mars is not here. Mars won't agree though. We all know Mars is definitely not gonna agree with this. Yeah, look, check it out, X, Y, B, A, bam. Oh, I can press all these buttons at once. It's freaking awesome. Yeah. Sweet. Um, In general, I'm thinking the A needs to go to the right two pixels. The X can go one pixel, and the Y can go two pixels. So A was two pixels to the right, which would be 309. X was one pixel, so that's 248. And Y was two, 219. That should be about right. <laughs> Ta! <laughs> All right. 
It's all right. It's all right. We'll get our we'll get a freaking awesome streak going at some point. Yeah, there we go. Now the Y. I don't know if that Y actually. The Y. I don't know. The Y is one too many. Yeah, let's do two eighteen on the Y. When will it come out? It's coming out officially in March 2016. The beta version will be out uh, January, and the alpha version is already out. If you want to play the alpha version, you can pre-order the game, and all the info for that is on the pre-order page. So let me post that for you if you're interested. If anyone's interested in playing the game, PC Warrior should be in the game. Yes, it should. Okay, so yeah, that's it for today's stream. I'm gonna kind of recap here what got what was done today, and I'll show you what tell you what I'm doing tonight, and then I'll be back tomorrow, coding and streaming as usual. So what got done yesterday was diagonal movement. This is actually really pretty neat. Diagonally moving, diagonally throwing the hat. Um, and today I added the X and the Y button, so we've got three different buttons that can be used for items. Um, what I need to do now is bind them, so um, you'll be able to, when you go to your inventory screen, you'll be able to bind them separately. So like you'll press the B button to bind your B, X to bind your X, and Y to bind your Y. Otherwise, just moving around just automatically, um, just doesn't automatically bind for you, you know? So that's it. That's it for today's stream. Just, um, this is pretty awesome actually having all these items. Let's try it out on the enemy really quick. These guys are. Okay, I'm trying to only use items. Oh, I'm out of I'm out of bombs. I'm out of bombs. This is totally. Hold on, guys. That oh well. But it, it's pretty cool. You can imagine with more items, you can more keys to bind. You can you can bind a lot more cool stuff and. Especially when your item list is huge, it's going to be really nice. So, uh, yeah, that's all for today. Thanks for joining the stream, you guys. Had a good time with y'all. That's right. That's right. See you guys later. Yeah, I got it on my list, Solar Flare, so I will definitely check it out. Yeah, cheers, Rocket Bunny. See y'all.